The event at the Capitol in early January, I think, stunned America. Uh, it was something that no one really thought would happen, and uh, it, uh, it did. And as a result of that, I think businesses, not only government, but businesses are really looking at their own operation to say, could that something that no, nobody ever thought could happen? Could that happen near me? Could it happen in my city? Could it happen at my asset? So I think what's happened now is people are really looking at their own internal procedures and protocols to see what could be done to hopefully eliminate it or, or prevent it, but certainly mitigate the impact of it should, it should it occur. Also, what's happened in the security industry is that security personnel are now looking at security companies as well as corporate security, in-house security operations are looking at their procedures uh, to look at and potentially add that to their emergency procedures. Do we have a procedure for a catastrophic event? Do we have a procedure where large amounts of crowds uh, could impact my asset? Over the last 12 months uh, since COVID and since the protests that have occurred uh, last summer um, related to uh, police activity, uh, we've seen an up rising or an up uptick of that type of protest demonstration uh, activity that normally we would not have seen. In the past, we've seen protests. Some of them have been related to a political event or an incident. A lot of them could have been labor related as well, or there's a union protest, that type of thing. Uh, it could be also a situation that occurred after a, a ball game or a win or, or some sort of large event that's uh, going on within a city or within an area. Uh, but obviously the last 12 months have been more concerning for security directors and property managers and corporate security professionals because of the volatility and uh, unfortunately some of the violence that goes with those type of events. So security personnel have been, I think, put on notice that we've got to be uh, prepared working with our partners and looking at our emergency procedures, making sure that the assets that we're protecting um, have the ability to close down in a short order. The other uh, aspect of this, uh, I think that is shown as been situational awareness. Uh, are the security personnel, are our clients reaching out to our law enforcement partners? Are we looking at social media feeds? Do we know what's happening within our city? Do we see any predictive, potentially predictive uh, trends that might let us know something might be happening? Uh, right now we're seeing a lot of intelligence from law enforcement pre-inauguration that there may be some violence in groups that are going to be going to Washington as well as other cities. So that's putting us as security professionals and our clients on notice to take a look at what have we heard from a chatter standpoint, what have we heard through our uh, associations, uh, what have we heard through law enforcement channels specifically in our area that could give us an indication we should be ready. And even if we haven't, I think it's a good opportunity for property managers and security personnel to revisit their emergency procedures, particularly when it relates to large crowds or criminal events that uh, could be potentially occurring. And if even if they're not going to be, it's, it's, it's a wake-up call for us to be prepared that in the event that does, that does happen, whether it's related to uh, the political climate of the country or other incidents, that we are ready and we're able to prepare to respond in the event that that happens. But it's all about preparation. What are we doing to prepare for it? What are the likely scenarios? Uh, what type of training have we done for our officers and understanding the do's and don'ts of responding? What have our property managers have done in terms of, or uh, corporate security partners have done to help prepare? What are the vulnerabilities of that particular building or site or company uh, to things like uh, targets that could be targeted or buildings or, or, or companies that could be targeted by protesters? Uh, are they ne near public transportation where a lot of the Folks that are protesting typically will use public transportation, and if you're across the street from that, may not be targeting your building, but it could impact because of that traffic flow. So these are all things that, uh, that need to be uh, addressed and considered. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all about that frontline security personnel because they're the ones that are going to be here 24-7. They're in the lobbies. They're patrolling. So they're really the eyes and ears of the property. So we have to train them in understanding what to do. And I think most importantly, the safety of those officers making sure that their role is not to interact with those uh, individuals, but to retract into the building, to call 911, to keep it under surveillance. And at Secure America, we have very comprehensive developed protocols and training for our officers in how not to engage, what to do if violence does occur. 
We also work with our property managers and uh, other customers, our security directors, as well as our uh, corporate partners to work with them in addressing and uh, reviewing their protocols. And those protocols not only are uh, involving security, but looking at their vendors, their parking, uh, their uh, other vendors that they use, their cleaning crews, their landscaping crews, because those are all uh, force multipliers in terms of looking at what's going on. Uh, that's all part of, I think, the overall process of looking at, 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 at these type of events and, and preparing for them. Uh, I think also what's important is the physical security uh, components of, of a particular building. Can we quickly lock doors? Uh, do the tenants and employees of a building, uh, are they being communicated with either by security or the company uh, to keep them in knowing real-time threat information? This is happening or this is happening down the street, they need to be prepared. And if it does happen, what are they supposed to do? What are the protocols? What are we going to do to lock the building up? Uh, are there safe areas for security to go to in the event that a building is breached? These are things that we would probably not think of years ago, but we have to think about now. And I think at the end of the day, we want to keep people safe. We want to be respectful to everybody. And at the same time, as a security provider, we want to really be an asset protection risk management partner with our clients.